For this morning, what portion of the word might I focus on? Um, well, I, I've, I've heard a few sort of different ones presenting their final message and they use the word finally. That's, that's a really good word to say, finally. You know, finally I just want to pass on it. Finally I'll just say this. Well, I'm going to dodge that word uh, and go to a different one that's already been used uh, this morning. And I'll see if... Uh, technology often doesn't work the way that I anticipate, so it should go to that. Uh, I wanted to share with you this sense of anticipation and confidence that I have about the future. and I, It's not something that we're consistently surrounded by. There, there's, there's, you know, there's quite a variety of comments that uh, will be presented about the life and the future of the church as such. But I'm absolutely confident of the future of the church. I'm confident of my own journey. I don't know what's up in front, but I, I'm confident about it. And, and I wanted to share this word with you as a part of my process of what's called uh, transitioning. That's the word actually uh, uh, has been used this morning already. That as we move from one point in our life journey to a, a new point in our life journey. And we're all doing that. For me and Margie, after five years that has gone, I do have to say, rather rapidly, disconcertingly rapidly, uh, that we've come to a term, uh, a time of transition. And we're not the only ones in it. We accepted the call to come to Victor Harbour a bit over five years ago, and that was the term that was, as it were, in my contract that this would be uh, a ministry of a transition nature, that we would move from the context of one season in the life of the church to another, through a season of healing into a place of being ready to take the next step. Well, I believe that time's come. By the grace of God, there is a readiness. He's brought us, as it were, that beautiful song that says, he's brought us this far by his grace. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. And his grace continues to be centred on our personal journey and our shared journey. Faith is building. The Spirit of God is at work. And I trust that you know that in your personal journey. Because it is very much a part of the individual's journey within a community that's going to be contributing, as it were, to the dynamic, the, 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 the electricity, the spiritual realities happening uh, in the community of faith. I'm confident of the future. And I'm placing my thoughts focus this morning into the context of 2 Timothy chapter 1. As many would be aware that the Apostle Paul, in writing this letter, is in a position of transition. He's moving out of ministry. His earthly journey, as it were, is approaching the finishing line. In actual fact, he uses that terminology a little bit later in the letter. So he's, he's looking, as it were, to, to hand over the baton. Hand over the baton to, to young Timothy. And um, you might read... What I'm about to say is me sort of handing over to Ryan and Adriel and the boys. Well, in some respects it is. But I do have to take a quick check. Who was here last week? Who was here the week before? Who was here the week before? Oh, you're regulars. Isn't that so good to note? But in all three of those settings, the, the reminder came to us from Ephesians that we've all got the calling in the ministry. It's not, so what I'm doing this morning is actually translating, and here it is, folks, boom, it's yours. Always has been. And the person called to provide leadership is to ensure that we're all individually conscious of that calling on our lives, and we are pursuing it personally, and we're looking sideways to make sure I'm tracking well with my Christian brother and sister. I'm not sitting back waiting for somebody to deliver the stuff that I think about, toss it up and leave it on one side of the road, or we're in it. 
And a few moments ago, we latched on again to our relationship with Jesus. And he said, just sit there and I'll just keep serving up to you. Uh, teaching session after teaching session. He said, so on your bike, he said, on your bike. Follow, step, move, walk. That's all very much about the working out, keeping in this context of an active relationship with Jesus. So Timothy's, Timothy's on the receiving end of what we might see as a sort of a handing over of the baton. Well, I can picture the Apostle Paul looking straight at Timothy and these words had a sort of an edge about them. Do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord. I, don't, I would not consider that to be a comfortable comment. No backing away, Timothy. No trying to dodge what's clearly something the Lord's called you into, drawing you into, wanting to work in your life, wanting to work out through your life. Don't back away. I'm fairly conscious that most of you would notice how often I would bring a song into, not that I sing it, Meg started chuckling. Why did you start chuckling then, Meg? Because Meg's heard me sing. But how often a song would come in? I've already used one. And this is the other one that came to mind as I read that. I'm not ashamed to own my Lord or to defend his cause. Maintain the honour of his word, the glory of his cross. And it goes on. It's almost got as many verses as the one we sang a moment ago. Take my life and let it be. Now there's a good hymn. In actual fact, as I've uh, realised, recognised, started to reflect on our time at Victor Harbour, I don't know how many songs and hymns and I do have to look across to this lady over here and said you've installed them well Miss Helen you've installed them well and I've said many a time that those the testimony of those songs have got their place in our journey they're not just here for me to sing they're my piece of string in the in the middle of my mind that says just be reminded look, Peter don't ever back away don't be ashamed now to say it is one thing to actually live it is a venture in itself. The actual term, you know, don't be ashamed. Now, there are some very gracious people that have been a part of my journey. And one of them <coughs> presented me with this. Look at it, it's well worn. I don't read it page after page because it's a concordance that doesn't make sense when you try and read down the lines, especially the bits that are in Hebrew. <laughs> now, the bits that I'm in Greek, I just say, here, Lionel, can you please read that for me? But I, I pick it up, and as you can see, uh, uh, here it is. Oh, goodness me, am I that old? 1973, my 21st. Quickly add it up. No, in actual fact, it must have been before that. So Peter Broadbent from the Collins family. Ken Collins, Elva, the family. Good little book. In the sense of, I can't honestly say I've read every page, but I'm pretty sure I've turned every page because I was looking for the word ashamed in the scriptures, in, in, in the concordance there. And that's sometimes pretty helpful. I turn there and it says something like the word ashamed means you turn inward. Has that ever happened for you? Somebody mentions the name of Jesus. I'm like a clam. <laughs> and the other way it can be translated is you change colour. Has that ever happened? Now I've got to check with my, my lecture. Yes, he's nodding. Good. But, you know, how often do we, when somebody brings the topic of faith or whatever, wherever they might start in their conversation about church life, da 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 I go, close down, or I change colour. And I'm thinking, 
I think the Lord's made provision for me to stand there calmly and say, where are you coming from? Because I don't plan to be on the back foot. How quickly I go to the back foot. One of the things I've consistently prayed, and, and, and I do encourage you into the prayer ministry space. I'll step out now. I won't be the one there sending out prompts and reminders of things to pray for. Somebody in this place is going to pick it up. It's vital. But my consistent prayer for Victor Harbour, appreciating the heritage that's in this place, I'm praying, Lord, for the release of the testimony that is in the saints. It's already there. The Lord has installed it. Year after year, he's installed. And the Spirit of God comes in, in an increasing sense of awareness in our lives and he says, I want to release that testimony. I don't want you sitting on something I've installed. And I'll come back to that point as I wrap up in a number of minutes' time. But it is my continued prayer for Victor Harbour that you will experience personally and as a community of faith the releasing of the testimony that is already within you. And you see, and this is where I guess I speak from personal experience, you discover that as you move in that releasing, the Lord has more to install. So it's not just a matter of, I've got half a tank of, you're ready to move in that. I will keep installing. And this is where I make my connect to a passage I shared with you last week in regards to keep on being filled with the Spirit. And I often say, well, I wonder what that means. Well, it's very much a part of this continuity in the relationship that says, I move in what the Lord's prepared me to move in, and he installs more. That's the nature of the journey. Now, I want to spend a moment in this part of the passage before I turn to that passage that talks about, I, I know whom I have believed. I've had that up before, but that, that is my prayer for Victor Harbour. Anybody recognise the photo? That's, that's coming from the other end of the island and history and changes that take place. And sometimes we wrestle with change. But when it comes to our relationship with Jesus and the work of the Spirit, I welcome change. Change from one degree of glory to another. It's his plan and his purpose. Share with me in the sufferings for the gospel, of the go of, um, for the gospel according to the power of God. So that's the bit I want to pause on for just a moment and pick out just those two words. We love to share things, and it's a vital thing to actually share our faith in the sense of not so much going out and I'm, I'm, I'm taking it as an evangelistic thrust, but more that just the realisation that we're on the same journey. We're working through a lot of similar dynamics in our relationship with Jesus. And I know that that is something that really does, um, as I said before, contribute to the very dynamic of a community when each and every person within it has got that, that personal stuff happening and it's coming out in our conversations. It's not a small part of our journey. It's very much filtering through every part of our life journey. So we share the reality of our relationship with Jesus. We share the things that we're discovering. We share the things that we're working through. It's a relationship building within the context of a community, but it's also one that in turn translates to something of the overall dynamic of a Christian community. And there's that comment that, that um, Paul makes there, share the sufferings. Now, we know that, oh, we would be aware, I'm sure, that in Paul's context, that suffering had, had uh, multiple dimensions to it. There was quite a strain on his life physically, uh, all the challenges of ministry and all that sort of stuff. And we can sometimes pick up that term and think, well, I know what suffering is. That's when somebody gives me a hard time for being, Jesus, uh, you know, being a Jesus follower. And certainly that can happen. But I also know 
that there's a tension, there's a strain, there's a stress that we're working with all the time. That is something that we have to acknowledge. As much as there is a releasing and a freedom that comes in the Spirit, we know that we are facing the reality of the world around us. And then there are places that we move into where we will be perplexed by what's going on. We're trying to work out, you know, what, what is this situation in which I find myself? And you and I know that in this current context, we could say that things have changed so dramatically over the years that the space in which we go to walk out our relationship with Jesus, to, to bring a testimony of our faith, it's different space. It's not quite as welcoming as it once was. There's not so much the readiness to sort of acknowledge the reality of God. And to me, that's part of that strain. I'm not suffering for my faith in the sense of persecution, but I'm feeling the strain of it. A healthy strain. A healthy strain that says, this is part of me walking out my relationship now, and this is the context in which the Lord's called me to live it out. And that will have a strain to it. And it's always, a, to, to me, in, 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 a, in a personal sense, it's always good to be moving along, feeling that strain. And I was very conscious of this as I made more and more connection with a football club, which apparently people had noticed and thought, what? But it's really, really interesting. You go into another person's life journey, it's vastly different. And there's a certain strain there. How, how can I walk into that space and know the liberty, the, the, liberty the, the freedom of my testimony having perhaps some influence? Sometimes it's tangible. Other times you don't know. But there's a strain. And for me, I'm not ashamed of that strain. I'm not backing away from that context and I'm not sticking my head in the sand saying there's no strain. I didn't get a drift of what I'm saying because I think it's very much the challenge, as it were, before every Jesus follower. Moving into territory that's no longer quite as responsive and I have to be the person that the Lord's making me to be to be able to move into that space, not tending to go inward or change colour, but give the evidence of the fact that he is at work in my life and through my life. And there's that final bit at the bottom that we, in that context, by the presence of the power of God. And as I mentioned ago, this is some, some of the reason as to why I have confidence about the future because of that way that clearly the Spirit of God is working in this place. And he's working on a personal basis in order that each and every one of us can enter into everything that he's prepared for us. <clears throat> yes, we will feel the strain we will feel something of the pushback that comes when we move into different territory. But I want to finish with this part of the uh, passage where Paul uses the term again. I'm, I'm not backing away in my relationship with Jesus. I'm not turning inward and I'm not changing colour for I'm not ashamed for I know whom I have believed and I'm convinced that to guard until that day what has been entrusted to me you clear out your office it's amazing what you find it is amazing. I, I, the concordance, I knew exactly where it was. But this, most amazingly, 
I discovered. Apparently I did theological studies at some stage or another. I was actually ordained. I forgot what the word was. I thought, isn't that an interesting piece of... I wonder who made the frame. A bit dodgy. I valued training and here's one of my lecturers from Bible college days and I know it's a really, really valuable place to be. Theological college was a different context altogether. I can vaguely recall the testimony I shared at my ordination. We were given 90 seconds each. And you say, well, that's long enough, Peter, you can finish now. And I'm not too sure how my comments went down, but I made the comment along the line that being at theological college is like sitting down to a bowl of broad beans. <laughs> I figured it's got to have some good for me, but it didn't taste too good on the way down. And along the way, there's been many an, an encouragement to continue studies, to do professional development. And I know they all have their place. I read a series of books on one occasion, fairly early in the piece, written by Paul Little, titled Know What You Believe, Know Why You Believe. All very helpful. But the crucial bit is, I know whom. I know whom I have believed. I know whom I've latched on to. I know whom, who has... I'm really good at English, have you noticed that over the years? <laughs> it was my favourite topic at school, second to lunch. <laughs> but I know who... I'm latched on to. I know how he's invested into my life. And I do know that I've invested into him. And here's that beautiful sense of assurance that Paul had. And I like to think I carry it myself. I know whom I have believed. And I know that he is able to keep that which I have committed to him and what he's committed to me. He's going to have the whole thing working at its maximum by the time I step into his presence, which means I've got to pick up the pace. I trust that everybody in this place has got something of that taste in your spirit this morning. You know whom. And the Spirit of God is at work in this place to fire up that, that awareness, that knowing, that being absolutely certain that what he has installed, he's going to have it working. He's not installing furniture in my earthly house. He's installing dynamic that I can live it out to his glory. I know whom I have believed. I know who I've latched onto. And from his end, he's not letting go. Had my final visit to Bugle Ranges yesterday. Spent some time with my brother. The amazing thing is spending time with Daryl didn't necessarily include a lot of conversation. You'd think, why don't you say something about your relationship with Jesus? Well, one of the times I'm anticipating the actions will say it. But one final task I had to do. One final task. I can put down my theological degree now, can't I? Um, sorry, Leon. I just chipped the paint. One final task. He's got this lovely wood burner in his uh, shack. And it needed to replace the little seal around the top in the, in the ceiling before he could actually fire up the, 
the the yeah the pot belly get it working I said oh I'm not too sure about how we're going to get it to hold up there he says oh, I've got some screws so I said oh some screws into jip rock mm, have you haven't got any super glue or no more nails so there we go around the edge stick it up there screw it in brilliant stuck now to fire up the pot belly remind you this morning of that latched onto Jesus in order that the pot belly's fired up hope you can see my imagery because that's how it happens latch on spirit of god fire i know not why god's wondrous grace to me has been made known nor why unworthy Christ in love redeemed me for his own but I know whom I have believed and I'm persuaded that he's able to keep that which I've committed to him against that day amen it's been a blessing to share ministry in the word with you over these years and i know that he is able lord i bless you and thank you for the company of saints that gathered here this morning those that are watching listening connecting in a variety of other ways lord that together we know the testimony of your spirit is real lord you've latched onto us you've enabled us to latch onto you and you want that fire you want that fire, that testimony released to your glory. And Lord, I know that you are able. Amen.